breaking news. We are continuing to follow breaking news in Minneapolis here on Mid Morning. I'm Heather Brown. And I'm Jason DeRussia. It has been a tough night, a night of chaos in the city with protests that started peacefully going out of control. Multiple fires raging in South Minneapolis. The outrage comes after and over the death of George Floyd on Monday night after he was pinned down by the neck by a Minneapolis police officer. Let's take you to Sky 4, above the area that has been the focus of the protest and the focus of the violence and destruction overnight. A fire continuing to smolder. You see firefighters throwing water still from, uh, from high up in the air on some of these fires that are burning. This an industrial building near Minnehaha and Lake. But we have seen industrial buildings, factories, restaurants, all sorts of buildings in that area on fire in the overnight and early morning hours. Our Christiane Cordero has been following all of this. She is live in the area right now, Christian. Jason, one of the images that has stuck with so many of you throughout much of the night is that apartment complex that was on fire. This is that apartment complex. It was under construction as a, what we understand, affordable housing. Now you can see that there are still hot spots early this morning. There are still uh, plenty of charring, plenty of smoke. And then, of course, the firefighters right behind that are working very aggressively now to put that fire out. This is so unfathomable to see um, in this frame itself. And yet it is one of so many other images that we've followed throughout the morning. Here's what we've seen. For miles away, the chaos and destruction in South Minneapolis was evident all night. It's much clearer as you arrive near the third precinct. In the morning, the shouts of protesters have mostly given way to the buzzing of alarms at stores. Every business you see within two blocks of the police station is damaged. Many are still on fire. Here, a Metro PCS store burns with no one there to put it out. Two blocks away, a line of Minneapolis police officers protect firefighters battling what's left of another much larger fire at an apartment building under construction. The cliche of the city looking like a war zone rings true. The damage elsewhere is astounding to see up close. The auto zone set on fire early in the chaos of the evening is collapsed, now a pile of rubble. That Metro PCS store is still burning and taking nearby power lines. As the sun rises through the hazy smoke, a community wakes up in shock. Shock is one word that uh, rings true for so many people here who have come, with, whether to to see it for themselves or to look at the businesses that they own, the homes that they live in. Jason, this is a story that we will, of course, follow throughout the rest of the day uh, and much after that as well. Christian, can you give us a sense for how things are different if they are right now at 9.03 as compared to what it was like, say, at 5.30 or 6 o'clock when you were out there this morning? Honestly, it feels almost like a little bit of a parallel universe because the time has just blended all together. Uh, we're seeing some fire getting put out in this building behind me right now with the water hitting that uh, really, really hot spot. That's some of the noise that you're hearing. When we were driving around this morning, Jason, we saw active fires. Now we're seeing a lot more of the efforts to contain, to put stuff out um, as the protests, the rioters have cleared the area, so it seems. And now the people who are standing around are just standing around in disbelief. And I want to make this distinction. We've talked about this before during our coverage, but there are people who are protesters, most of the protesters, who uh, had no intention of doing anything other than having their voices heard. A different group, perhaps some overlap, but a different group of uh, people who are doing criminal activity, if that is in fact what has caused these fires, and uh, certainly it's what caused the vandalism. Uh, are any folks still milling about, any protesters or uh, people who appear to be uh, looking for trouble? Not that I've seen in the past few hours, at least. And for what it's worth, I actually just saw within the past few minutes a tweet from attorney Ben Crump, who is representing the family of George Floyd, saying in a, a, a slew of tweets that you should, uh, of course, read on your own. But one of the things that he says is that the city is calling and the family is calling for peace at this time. Of course, he also says that the black community wants peace in their souls. So that's the delicate balance that we're trying to get a better understanding of here in South Minneapolis, Jason. Yeah, we heard one community leader saying that this is a fire that's been burning for long before this moment, the frustration and the anger uh, towards police. Christian, thank you. Christian Cordero joins us live once again along Lake Street there. And Christian, I know you're wearing your mask this morning, but with all of the fires of so many buildings we've seen, uh, I imagine it's still quite smoky out there. 
the smoke has lingered all morning long, Heather. All of yesterday, I was covering peaceful protests just two miles away from here on Chicago and 38th Avenue South. And um, that was, there were so many powerful messages there, so many important conversations that were happening. The rioters who focused here around the third precinct, um, we've been told are the outliers over and over again. And yet you look at the devastation and it is so shocking. This was an auto zone, if you'll believe me, this is actually its good side right now. The other side is pretty much on the ground, uh, leveled and just a pile of rubble. And then, as you mentioned, the mask, right? It is almost, it's almost unfathomable that we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. And that matters right now because there are so many small businesses right here along Lake Street that have been vandalized, that have been looted, um, that are scared. And I've spoken with a lot of people who are scared. Uh, this was never going to be a good time to be in the middle of this very, very disruptive conversation. And, and, and you know, the idea, of course, is that it would turn into a productive conversation, um, but in the middle of a pandemic nonetheless. So this is some of just kind of the devastation that we've seen. It is one intersection of about maybe seven or eight that we've been to this morning that has images very similar to what you see right here. I've spoken with many people on the scene. I'm going to show you two of the people that I've spoken with. One is a woman who I talked with maybe around 6 a.m. Um, who was just watching it happen and also just putting it into context of the greater message here. Um, and But first, you're going to hear from a gentleman who actually lives right across the way, maybe about 20 yards or so from the apartment complex that's under construction that was on fire through much of the night. You've seen those images, right? He lives right there. It got very hot. He had to evacuate. Here's what he said. It didn't make sense. If, if they want justice for whatever's going on, they got to, this it can't happen. We need to stick with what we need to do to take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. This kind of stuff can't happen. This is a long time in the making. The situation has been combustible for quite a while, and city leaders have had a long time. Jamar Clark died November of 2015. They've had all that time to clean up the police department. We see now, which is a, a huge sim symbol of the frustration that many people have with our police department. Right now, most of what we see are um, city officials of some sort, whether it's fire or public works, trying their best to clean up the streets here um, in South Minneapolis. And um, we're going to keep continuing the area to explore the area and just see what else we can find. Of course, um, we know that as small business owners uh, make their way to their shops this morning, they're going to have a whole lot more to deal with individually. So we'll go ahead and talk with them as well, Heather. It's so hard, Christian. Many of these small businesses have been closed now for three months already and come back wondering if they would even be able to reopen and coming back to this and thinking now that may not be an opportunity may not be a chance anymore christian we really appreciate you being it's out there too this much morning. to wrap your head around right